Jean van Eyck is going to be one of the major artists of the Northern European 15th century. He is court painter to Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy, no relation to Ron of Burgundy, and he will take advantage of oil paints throughout his career. The first piece we're actually looking at is the Ghent altarpiece. Now this is a retable or altarpiece and is one of the largest of the 15th century. It's made up of multiple panels which makes it a polyptic, which is a painting, typically an altarpiece, consisting of more than three leaves or panels joined by hinges or folds. Now when we look at it, what we see is a massive, massive piece. and starting with the outside. So here the doors have been closed and we see a depiction of the donors right there kneeling in prayer to the patron saints of Ghent who are Saint John the Baptist and Saint John the Evangelist who are there. An annunciation appears above them in the central panel with the prophets Zechariah and Micah above. Inside we have a series of images depicting the redemption of man through Christ. And here we see the various characters. We see the sacrifice of Cain and Abel and the murder of, Cain, of Abel by Cain in those very upper corners right up here. We see Adam and Eve on the outside, choirs of angels, John the Baptist, deity, the Virgin Mary. And then we see the judges, knights, pilgrims, hermits, and the adoration of the Holy Lamb. Now, as we look at it, what we're seeing is a series of images. We're seeing Adam and Eve. Now, they are depicted nude. Eve is not the most feminine image that we've seen, probably because, again, she's a feminized male. Also, possibly because of the church's view on women and their issue with fertility, which is why her hips seem to have been accentuated. Adam and Eve are nude because they have to be. It has to do with original sin and their role within the Bible. Then we have the choirs of angels necessary when we're looking at a heavenly image. We see St. John the Baptist and Mary at either side of God. Now, interestingly, St. John is there fulfilling his role as really, and this is St. John, I, I'm sorry, I've said St. John the Baptist. This is St. John the Evangelist, and he's there fulfilling his role with Revelation, where he sees sort of the end of the world and what's going to come. But then in the center, in the center, we have God in all of his splendor, kind of an unusual image. Now, in Italy, we saw very simple images of God, but here we see something very complex, a lot of luxuriant material wealth. At the bottom, what we're seeing is an expanded symbolism of the upper side. So in that central panel, we have a community of saints who are proceeding towards the altar of the Lamb and the octagonal fountain of life representing the adoration of the Lamb on All Saints Day. Now, if we get a little bit closer to it, we can see really that detail, the Lamb in the center, the various saints walking up. And the Lamb itself symbolizes the sacrifice of Jesus, in this case, literally pouring blood from his chest, representing the chest wound that Jesus gets on the cross, into a chalice. Basically, this is his attempt, this is Van Eyck's attempt, to make real the idea that the body, that the bread and wine at Mass becomes the body and blood of Jesus. The fountain symbolizes the pure water of life, this idea of purity and spirituality necessary in life. The outer four panels, which you see put together here, represent knights, pilgrims, hermits, and judges. They symbolize temperance, justice, prudence, and fortitude, four, or the four cardinal virtues. Now here, oils are used to depict color and texture in a manner that has never before been seen. 
The interesting thing is, unlike Michelangelo, when you look at some of the details, some of the texture, what you'll notice is that you can tell what kind of fabrics they're wearing. You can tell where their metallics embroidered in. And you can only do that because of the use of oils. Van Eyck has weeks to work with these oils. He has a great deal of time to refine how everything looks, whereas Michelangelo has a matter of hours. Which is why Michelangelo doesn't worry about materials, but we do start to see that in Northern Europe. It's not necessarily a show of decadence so much as it is a show of the strengths of the oil paints they're using. Now, this attention to the smallest detail will become a hallmark of Flemish painting.